All right. Uh, so welcome. Aaron, off to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much and welcome to our live stream today. I'm so excited to join you all. We're going to be focusing on writing in various different ways today and we'll explore a couple different things that we can do in our journals based on this idea of writing. And we will also have a little bit of time to explore some pages in progress and see how writing gets incorporated into pages that have already been started. But before we get into the making, I promise to tell the story of the wallpaper samples that were in your box. Many of you got a small square or a little piece of wallpaper. And this was truly um, a labor of love for you all before I even knew that this was a thing we were going to do. I was in Toronto for a conference and I was walking around and uh, as a, a, an avid dumpster diver, I'm always walking around kind of with an eye for what might I find on the street. And I walked by what looked like um, an interior design store that had closed and out front they had a box that was full of rolls of wallpaper and wallpaper books. And it was just all these wonderful patterns. And I looked at it and I thought, I have to bring that home with me. How am I gonna bring it home with me? I'd come for a conference. I had my one suitcase and my backpack with my, with my computer to present. So I, I lugged this huge box of wallpaper samples back to where I was staying in Toronto, went out, found it the cheapest suitcase I could and packed all of the things into the suitcase. And I ripped all the wallpaper samples out of the book so it would be a little bit lighter um, and came home and I got picked up from the airport and was like, you left with one suitcase. You're coming home with two suitcases. What happened? Well, the suitcase was full of all these wonderful wallpapers. Um, so then they lived in my office for a while. And uh, when I when the pandemic happened, they came here to the studio. So they've done a lot of traveling before coming to you all in your art journal snacks ephemera pack. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, that is truly ephemera that's done some world traveling and uh, been around quite a bit before ending up in your journal. So I'll probably use a little bit of that today as we create. So that's a little behind the scenes. And now we'll get started. Okay, so I have my word that was in the ephemera pack and my word was extraneous. And I thought this would be just the perfect thing to start with this idea of thinking about writing. The definition here that the card gives is omit, or the example, omit all extraneous matter from your talk. That is something that sometimes I have a hard time doing. I can be a talker sometimes, because that's why I live with parrots. But, you know, it's one of those things to kind of think about when you're writing in a journal and using it as an art journal, is that balance between writing and imagery. And sometimes we're kind of finding that balance, trying to find that place where um, is this an art journal or is this a writing journal? And we'll play with those ideas a little bit today. So definitely going to touch in with this. And when we think about eliminating all extraneous matter from your talk and thinking about connecting with ourselves, I would invite you to think about what is one word to describe how I am feeling right now? One word to describe how I'm feeling and write it down on your page, add it to your page. Think about maybe writing large or writing the word over and over again as we've been playing with. How am I feeling right now? Okay, so my word is anticipation and thinking about how I might play with this word now is to think about what colors, what patterns, what things come to mind when I think about anticipation. So definitely some excitement, something bold. Um, 
So I'm going to use the paint markers to start with and just start to do some marks that are kind of like that pow or bam or explosion, a good kind of an explosion, like a confetti explosion. <laughs> I suppose a confetti explosion isn't terribly green. So maybe it's an explosion of flower petals. <laughs> we're about to have an explosion of flower petals here in California. They're thinking we're probably going to have another super bloom this year. So it'll be an explosion of orange poppies. So I'm just making these shapes and they're kind of getting more organic as I go. And I'm going to go over the edge of my little word card here so that now I'm starting to layer, right? So when we think about incorporating vintage ephemera with something that's quite a bit more modern, I really like to think about layering these things so that they start to talk to each other. They start to work together instead of looking out of place, right? So if I just went right up to the edge of this, it's not so much part of the page itself. Maybe I'll do one more of these right here. Okay, so I'm feeling now like, I don't know, there's, there's gonna be a little bit of contrast between the word extraneous and this word anticipation, because this word to me feels like it has a lot of extra, right? There's a lot going on. And I think I'm just gonna let that be. I'm gonna go with the, the extra of it all, the busyness of it all. So I'm using um, a wax crayon now. This is a, like a wax, it's slightly more muted, a little bit more of a natural color next to this neon orange. So this will help to incorporate some of that vintage paper into this page a little bit more. And you can see that I'm, I'm working quickly. And I talk about this every time. I, I really try when I'm working in my art journal, unless I'm doing something that's intentionally contemplative, I really try to work quickly because I find it more often gets to the how I'm actually feeling because I'm not editing myself, right? I'm just letting the page happen. I, I have not planned this page out. I plan to use this word. I did not plan for this one and I did not plan what materials I'm using. So you're really seeing this kind of in the moment response to, okay, I put that down, what comes next? Okay, I put that down. Now what comes after that? So as I was saying that to you, I felt like I want something a little bit more organic. So we'll do some little circles here. Again, I'm, I'm moving fast, right? So these are kind of maybe the bubbles bubbling up out of the anticipation. And for you, depending on what word you've chosen, if you're making along with us right now, think about what mark you can make that's very different from the marks you were making previously. Right? So a little bit of variety, a little change there. So next thing I want to do is because I've used that wax and because of the acrylic marker, I want to come in with something that's water-based. So I'm going to work with, ooh, maybe I'll work with a little bit more of this kind of warm feeling here, this anticipation. So I've got the Viva color sheets here and I'm going to come in with like a, it's burgundy mixed with orange. So 
quite a bit richer and darker here. So it's going to make that orange crayon really pop with the resist. And I think I'm going to leave the white spaces in where the acrylic marker is and just do the resist up to that edge. So keep a little bit of the white of the page. You can see here where it gets where it gets more orange, it doesn't quite resist as much. So I'm going to go back and get a little more dark. So I get more of that nice rich pop of the resistance. I love using wax resist because it's one of those kind of early bits of art magic that we learn. <laughs> you know, we learn it's, it's a pretty common elementary school project to use crayon resist in some way with water-based media and teach kids about the magic of mixing materials. I think our first project when I was in elementary school was something about the ocean, something about being underwater. And we drew like fish and seaweed and whatever else we wanted in our ocean scene and then added the blue watercolor paint. And it was that experience of like, wow, this is so cool. Look at this. I, I drew something and now it's really underwater. So my word I wrote with a water-based pencil, so the Faber-Castell. So I can kind of blend it in a little bit now. So this now getting more towards this kind of vintage look that I have in this word. Even though I started out with the neon, you don't really notice how bright the neon is now that I've brought in these other colors and kind of started to blend them together. Okay crossover better here. And maybe on this side, I'll go more into the burgundy, more into this red. I don't know if I agree with the color name. Feels a little more magenta than burgundy to me. <laughs> Although I've been hanging out with a lot of paint chips lately. And there are so many funny color names. I think when you're choosing the color for your home, you might fall in love with a color and then see the color name that has been given to it by the paint company and it might change your mind, right? I'd be really careful about that. I'm sure that's someone's entire job is coming up with the names for the paint colors for the different paint companies, house paint companies. Okay. So I really, really like how this is coming along. With the different, the different color here. This is one thing that I am always looking at when I'm collaging into a page and then painting over top of it is this see where it skips, where it comes across where this paper is lifted up from this paper here. And usually I kind of go back in and, and fill that back in. Now, another way to, to address that is to coat this whole page with matte medium or a Mod Podge or put tissue over top. And then you end up with like a seamless transition from the page of your art journal across the ephemera and to the rest of the page. But that's just totally matter of taste. And also about how much time you have and if you can let your page sit open and be dry. So now I'm going to go in with some smaller mark making with using the tip of my brush, using the same colors, kind of doing a little scribbly mark making here in these, in these spaces. 
And so I, I referenced this idea of ethnic writing, and we'll talk more about this as we, as we go today, but I'm thinking about writing as I'm doing these marks. So imagining that I'm scribbling in ways that could be letter formed. can think about the way that some people's signatures, you know, they, you ask them to give you their signature, or write their name down, and it's so automatic after a certain point that it, it doesn't even look like letters anymore, which I guess is good for forgery purposes, right? My mom and I have the same handwriting, which was maybe dangerous when I was <laughs> a teenager. <laughs> I didn't do anything bad, but we did have exactly the same handwriting. Okay. So again, this is kind of something that just happened, that, that little brush stroke there where you could see the bristles of the brush. So kind of like what happened. I'm gonna add a little bit more of that and some stops. A couple of other things that I really like that are, ha that are happening on this page right now are where the water is drying and the pigment is moving a little bit there and here. Those are things that, again, you can't really engineer that. You can't make it happen. You can know something about the materials and add more water and play with it in a way that's going to do that, but you can't force it. And this is, again, where art journaling is a little bit different than making a finished composition on a piece of canvas or a large piece of paper, is that you're, you're really kind of going for that. Because the more that I play with these ideas in my art journal, then I can translate that to other pieces of art or other media because I've explored it somewhere that is a safe place to explore these things. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in a little bit and bring this word slightly back into view. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of scribble with this in some other spots. And this is now starting to get a little more of that kind of frantic anticipation feeling. And I get the sharpness of the line. Okay. okay. So I think I'm gonna let that sit for a little while. I might come back to this page later and play with it a little bit more. But we'll let it be for the time being. I'm going to set this aside. And we will go to another blank page. Where did that just go? Okay. So this was something I wanted to talk about is um, one strategy for writing in your art journal is to write with a rush to it. Meaning I'm not sitting down planning out what I'm going to say. I'm going to start writing and just let myself get to the end of the page. So either of the pens that we got in our first box are a good choice for this, either the Faber-Castell pen or the Edding draw liner. They're both good choices. They, they move really nicely on the page and they allow you to write without having to look at the fact that you're writing too much. You're really just kind of moving your hand in response to what you're thinking. Whereas with a brush pen or something else like that, you're much more aware of the letter forms as you are forming them. And so it's a little, little more likely that you're gonna edit yourself. So I think I'm gonna use the Faber-Castell, a little bit more fine point. And I'm gonna turn this so that I can write a little bit more 
straight across. <laughs> it's a little hard to turn my body to do this. So I'm just going to turn it this way. And I'm going to start writing and see where it goes. Okay, so for you, just take a breath, put your pen in the spot that you're going to begin, and write your way down the page. And as you're writing, um, the word and is really useful because it keeps you going. When you get to the end of the page, maybe you have like that one last little word. Um, my my niece told me the other day when she was writing, she's just learning to kind of write longer words. And she told me that her word turned the corner because she ran out of room when she got to the corner. So she just kind of made it turn the corner up the other end of the page. Okay, so uh, again, didn't plan this out, but I wrote about the weird nightmare I had last night. Um, <laughs> and the fact that I was able to calm myself down because when I woke up, it seemed really scary. And then it was funny because I realized where every little part of that dream came from, there was a reason for it and uh, it all made sense. So it was uh, a relief to have that happen. And that's always a nice thing when you can come to some sense of relief. But maybe I'll make this facing page and I would uh, invite you to think about what did I write? Is there something in this that might inspire the facing page? And so I think what I will do is create something that's kind of about that experience of waking up. Afraid. I'm using a big thick pen. Again, I'm always thinking when I'm choosing materials to work in my art journal, I'm thinking about what can I do that's going to quickly get the content onto the page so that I can work with it some more. So do my worried eyebrows, as we say in this in this house, we talk about worried eyebrows. Tired eyes. And maybe think about filling in this whole page with darks in different ways. Maybe a little bit of dark over onto this side. So think about what did I write and what can I make that starts to maybe illustrate that writing? Okay. So I have no. <laughs> no hairline here. I'm going to do some white and kind of suggest that a little bit. Just 
little bit of that kind of mystery of, of waking up and wondering what is going on in the world around me? Where did this weird idea come from? Okay. And then I'm going to use some gray and we'll go over top of this pen. So the writing is there, the dream is there, the experience is there, but I'm going to obscure it a little bit with some water-based media. And the nice thing about these favorite Castell pens is they stay put. And because it's a bullet pen, you know, it's got a bullet tip on it. Um, it imprints into the page a little bit. So when you go over the top with a water-based media, there's very, very subtle, but there's almost a little bit of texture to where the writing was. Okay. So some things that I could think about now with this page are, I've got this turquoisey thing going up and then the blue. Do I want to play with more color on this page or keep it relatively simple as far as color? I think I want to keep it simple. So I'm going to use another one of their pros markers and bring in a little bit of blue next to this black. So I'm using acrylic paint marker over an oil-based marker. So it's going to stand out a little bit on the surface. This acrylic marker has a little more opacity to it than the oil base. So it'll kind of fit on top in a different way. Scribbles on top of scribbles. <laughs> I don't know, I'm kind of wondering right now as I'm working on this side, I'm gonna do that thing again with trying to get that, make that line between the attached paper and the paper of the journal disappear a little bit in some spots. But I'm, I'm wondering, do I leave this the way it is or do I add color to the face? I haven't decided yet. Other thing you could think about doing with your page full of writing, and we played with this idea before, is to think out, think about are there words or phrases within that that are the most important part that I want to have stand out? And for me, it's this here. So trying as closely as possible to go over my writing to stay with how I wrote it instead of editing the letters in some way. <laughs> which is, you know, we can feel pulled to do that, especially if you've done any graphic design or typography, right? You want to kind of edit your lettering. But now that I've kind of made this one a little bit more organic, maybe I'll just add a little blue around the edges there because it did feel so real. You notice I'm not telling you what the dream was. I heard one time that it's very boring to listen to other people's dreams. I don't find that to be true. I like hearing other people's dreams. Maybe that's why I'm a therapist. <laughs> but you don't need to hear my dream. Just know it was very real. <laughs> okay. So I like how that's coming out. I feel like I want a little bit of color over here, but I don't know what yet. It might be just in the eyes. Uh, one way I could go is to make the eyes look kind of bloodshot and not rested, but that's not really how it felt. It didn't feel that overwhelming. What I might do is again, staying with this kind of a just blue, go in with a different 
the pen and add a little bit of color into the eyes. Please excuse the paint pen. It's got some other material on here. <laughs> I'm kind of hard on my art materials because I do so much mixed media work. Okay. I like that better. It looks a little bit more alive. I think I need a little bit more of this color and some spots. So we'll add a little bit of that over here. And this is one of those pages that um, I would tend to just do and then leave. We've been talking as we've been art journaling together over the past couple of months now is this, this balance between starting a page, letting it be until it feels done and, and coming back to it and continuing to work on it and edit and add. And then other pages that are really about I'm responding, I'm doing something in the moment that's about expressing something and then I'm walking away from it. And this would tend to be the kind of journal page that would be like that for me is to kind of have my writing. I did it. I made the image that's in reference to this writing, I've kept working with it for a little while and then done. I'm going to leave this page as it is. Only thing I might add <laughs> as I say that is to darken the edges a little bit. I'm looking for a dedicated black pan. I've been talking about this with some of you just to kind of help my eye feel like this page is done. Just picking a blue wax crayon and going around the edges just to, to tell myself this page is done. <laughs> it's got a border, it's got a frame, it's done. And it also helps to kind of keep your eye in the page. Okay. And this is where <laughs> my words sometimes contradict myself because now that I've done this and I'm looking at this, it almost looks like I'm underwater a little bit. So I, I kind of want to play with that and add a little bit more here. Like I'm kind of coming up out of the fog of sleep. Okay, I like that. Let me bring a little bit of that blue over here. Okay. For real now, <laughs> I'm gonna let this page be. Um, stay tuned, I might post something on Mix that I've done something else to it and kept going. All right, so there's that. I'm gonna set that one aside or actually I'm just gonna turn the page. Okay, so some people have strong feelings about this. For me, I actually really like when there's ink coming through, which is why I don't paste a lot of attention to like, oh, I better not use that material in my art journal because it's going to bleed through. Doesn't bother me because this now is a less intimidating page for me. It's got a little bit of wax on the edge from rubbing it on the on this page. It's got a little bit of that black coming through and it can become where I am going to make some more marks, especially because these next marks are it's it's something I want to put a little thought to and um, not let the blank page intimidate me. You say it that way. Okay. So what I would like you to do, I'm going to invite you to do something that um, is a, a prompt that you might use at different times in your life when things maybe feel difficult and you're feeling like, I don't know if I can do this or um, this feels overwhelming or intimidating or I'm not sure is to start a page with the idea. And you, you can write it or not. You can also just think it, but I am strong when. Okay, so again, you can choose to write that on your page or you might just think it. What I want you to notice about this phrase is that I wrote it as a truth not as a feeling, meaning I didn't say I feel strong when, I said I am strong when. So it's a fact, it's a trait, it's something that's real and true. And I would encourage you to think about it that way. Um, 
because it's just a little bit more empowering. It's a little bit of a stronger statement. So I am strong when, and I'm going to use I'm going to use a little bit of wallpaper. So some of you I've already seen have gotten this wallpaper because some people have shared pieces of it with this pattern. I'm going to add this one on here. And as I'm doing this part, kind of preparing my page, I'm thinking about when do I feel strong? And then how am I strong? And what's the difference for me? Because if I can tell myself I am strong, I can carry that into every situation, even the ones where I don't particularly feel very strong. Okay. So I am strong when, and I am, I'm gonna stick with acrylic paint pen for right now. I was thinking about this this morning. When I came in from paddling and I got a new personal record while I was paddling this morning. So I felt very strong. And I came in and it was on dock and I was putting my board away and I was like, I feel very strong. <laughs> There's my muscle. Um, I felt very strong. And then it was kind of the realization, I am very strong. I did a big thing. I go out before dawn. I am strong, right? And so you kind of have that conversation with yourself. So I'm using, I've talked about this before, searching lines to kind of define the shape of myself here, focusing on the shape of my strong arm. And then I'm gonna just keep scribbling here. That if you haven't played with this yet, the acrylic paint pen over top of these wallpaper samples is really fun because the texture changes on some of them. So if you're lucky enough to have gotten some of the ones that have the texture change, it's really delightful. It feels really fun to draw and scribble on, the, on it. So I'm gonna leave this very simple, kind of pulling on this idea of another strong woman art with a flex muscle like this. You'd be familiar with it. I'm going to leave it like that, which is kind of the strong self. And then thinking about what else do I want to put in here that like feels really strong and um, powerful. And I think maybe some more solid colors, big pieces of paper, maybe that way. So remember, as you're working on it, keep coming back to the I am strong, because we lapse really easily back into the I feel strong when I do this, right? And reminding yourself that like, yes, I feel strong, but also I am strong when I do that. And there's, there's just a difference in how the words feel and how we receive them making that very small change. Okay. So this is something that I really like doing when I've used collage material on part of the page. I let it hang off the side and then cut right along my page edge here, save those bits. and incorporate them somewhere else. See what kind of like, see that way. Better. 
so this paper has a little more texture on one side than the other because it was probably kind of slightly textured mesh when it was made. And it's evolved a little bit. Okay. So maybe I'll put that one over here. Again, you've heard me say this, the lost and found edges. So this line is coming across here, it's interrupted, then it's interrupted here by the uh, acrylic paint, and then it comes here and it's kind of interrupted again by this paper. Hey, Aaron, this is Lee. Just want to give you a time check. You're about halfway through. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so I am strong when got this wax here that's just begging definitely for some kind of resist to happen. I've got my figure here that I might play with some more. And then I've got these solid areas that again, maybe they stay as they are. Maybe there's more layers that can go on top of this. Just kind of some, some things to think about as this page continues to evolve. I'm seeing something on my desk that I think I want to incorporate in. This is from a book that I cut up. Um, and this is one of those unfortunate ephemera situations where you like what's on one side and then you turn it over and you like what's on the other side as well. We have a person here in a, a yoga pose. That's one of my favorites. Um, but then there's this beautiful hand and how do I decide which one I want to use? And then there's this part that's interesting to me. And I like the balance of these two things together. So part of me wants to incorporate this in. Um, I don't know, maybe this is kind of going in too much into a different direction. But one way I could do it would be to put it down and have it fold over and then this can open up. And I think for the sake of being able to explore some more things with you all today. I'm going to go ahead and do that. If one glue stick is empty, there's always another glue stick to follow it in my world. <laughs> Plenty of glue sticks all the time. Okay. So as I'm sticking this, I'm feeling a little bit like kind of sad about covering this nice blue. So I'm going to do this so I don't cover quite so much of it. And then hold this part here. So then those two pieces can kind of be visible at the same time. Got a little bit of glue on this part. I'll pull this up. You can see me editing and changing things as I'm working. And I would really encourage you to do this as you're working in your art journal, especially if you're working with a glue stick and you're working on the page kind of all in one go. You do have that luxury of being able to peel stuff back up. Not that you can't do that with other materials later, but glue stick just enables that in a different kind of a way. Okay, so this is starting to get interesting to me. I like the hand and the arm and the yoga pose and the balance here and the darkness of this with this black part that's coming through. So again, this is a page I'm going to let it sit for a bit, but remembering this idea, I am strong when I encourage you to continue to explore that. Okay, so I'm going to turn to another blank page. And now what I'd like you to do is get something that is more fluid, is um, maybe a brush pen, maybe a paintbrush with watercolor paint, could be a larger brush, could be a smaller brush, depends on what you're comfortable with. 
Um, a brush pen, again, also works nicely. I think I'm going to use kind of more of a fine point watercolor. And let's see. So we're going to do a scenic writing. And the way that this works is you make marks that are like writing. So your hand, your arm is moving as though you're writing things. But uh, you can kind of bring to mind um, what children do before they know how to write, but they want to write, you know, like they're playing office or they're doing something they're like, I can write like you. And really they're just making movements of the pen or the crayon or the whatever on the paper. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do now. So one of the easier ways to do this is kind of all in one go. Um, so if you're working with a brush pen, it's a little easier. If you're working with um, watercolor, like I'm going to do, it's a little bit trickier because you might have to reload your pen or your brush, but uh, just kind of start. And again, you're moving your brush in the way that you're like writing cursive writing, you know, and so maybe you go back and you kind of do some dotting the I's and crossing the T's, but none of this is with words in mind. You're just moving your brush or your pen as though you are writing words. And this has some connections to calligraphy and to meditative practices. It feels really wonderful to do. And it also, as you can see, kind of makes very interesting textures for your page. So you can do this straight into your journal, straight onto your journal page. Or you can do it onto a piece of tissue paper or another piece of paper and do this writing on the whole thing and then kind of tear it up. So that's the other nice thing about this is it has the texture of writing without words that have content. So you can really do that idea of text as texture, writing as texture without the dictionary or um, narrative content that words themselves have. So I've almost got my full page filled here. My marks are hey, Aaron, ready. we have a uh, question in the chat here. Any tips or ideas on how to get out of your head for this? That's from Sherry. Yeah. Mm. For me, sometimes going one, two, three, start in my head helps. Um, and then not stopping. Like you saw me up until this very last part, not really stop. So that's one way. Um, try to keep your eye ahead of your brush, meaning you're not paying attention to what you just did. You're really just moving your brush as you're going, right? So that's one way. Um, if you find yourself Stopping, you saw me do this a few times where I went back and kind of put some almost like I'm dotting I's or crossing T's here. Um, if you find yourself questioning yourself or like, I don't know if I can keep doing this, or there's two thirds of the page left and I'm not sure I can make it to the end, go back and do that and then pick it back up. The nice thing about um, a scenic writing is that uh, it has these kind of natural breaks in it, right? Like here you can see and here a little bit you can see where it's almost like they're words but there's no words here and you really just have to empty your mind that's hard but this actually helps so doing this can be really helpful if you're having an anxious day or you're worried about something or you're frustrated right I, I did this with red I'm not mad about anything but I could imagine that doing this um, on a day where I think felt angry with like a really deep red might feel awesome. Um, the thing I like about doing it with watercolor is, um, especially with a, with a water brush, is that you can squeeze a little more water out in certain areas and end up with things like this, which is really lovely. So, you know, one, two, three, go is a good, is a good um, goal. And then just try to fill the page without stopping. So those are my, those are my tips for that. <clears throat> okay, so once I've done this, 
now I have this page. What do I do with it? Right? There's so many things that you could do with a page like this. You could go in with a fine point pen and start to fill in some of those areas, right? Fill in those empty spaces. Maybe you go in with wax crayon. If you've used watercolor like this, you could go in with wax crayon over the top of some of the really sensitive areas, the fine point areas, and uh, just get a little resist there. So you could go back in with more media and those will stay, right? Like this part right here is really very beautiful to me, this little bit of pigment that's kind of spreading out there. And I wouldn't want to obscure that or, or have it bleed or change in any way. So uh, other thing you could do is decide like, I'm going to put a big collage image right here in the middle. And I'm not going to worry about the fact that I'm covering part of this up because there's no technical mm -mm, narrative based content to this. I really tried to empty my mind. I was just making marks. So I could put, you know, a big collaged image right here. Um, or maybe larger words or other materials, right? There's so many possibilities with this as a background. Um, you could really fill an entire journal with writing like this and then use that as the kind of dealing with the blank page. It's another another thing that you could do. Um, kind of a cool practice to fill a bunch of pages um, or pieces of paper with that and then uh, keep responding in that way uh, by, by playing with it and doing other things. And so I'm gonna set that one aside. And I had a couple of pages in progress that I wanted to show you slash maybe play with, with some writing. Okay, so one of them is more functional. And this one, I think we looked at this page last time we were together, but I wanted to show you something on this page that's more about functional writing. I believe last time we were together, we were doing this part and the collage. And I added some other things to it. I found um, this, this I did during the last live stream. And then I found this piece of collaged image which was so exciting because it was that same kind of grid pattern and almost that same red. This was in a completely different source. So I got so excited when I saw it. It was just like a little scrap, but it was so exciting because it was perfect. Um, so then I had the hands there and then <laughs> this sticker came on, uh, I don't even remember what, oh, it was on, uh, some media that I ordered for uh, some things I'm making for the third box. And I just loved this, this like big, strong hand holding this spray bottle um, helps prevent liquid leaks. And what I did on this page was incorporated the check boxes and I wrote down some of my uh, to get art materials. So some materials that I need to get. And I'm seeing now that there's one thing I can check off. Because I did just get some more acrylic collage. All right. So these are some other media that I want to stock up on for the studio. So you can use writing in your journal in a more functional way. So that's what I wanted to show here is this idea of my journal is really a working space. And the writing that I do here is for that purpose. Now, another way that you could use writing is to kind of tell the story of a page, right? To give it almost a title or a label. And I haven't quite decided yet what else is going to go on this page. There's the word next here. And maybe I want to write something that's about that idea of next. And so I'm going to write will see. So writing in a way that is helping you to work on the page to think about what else is going to go here. So what's next? We will see. We'll see how the page evolves. We'll see what uh, emotionally or metaphorically happens next here.
and another I'm like stacking journals around me right now. <laughs> another way that we can think about writing, and I showed you on Instagram and on Nick this journal page as it was evolving. I did this writing in the cafe as I was enjoying my Americano in a new cafe in a new city um, that I'll be spending more time in. So the first thing I did was did the writing that was really just about like how am I feeling right now in this moment, what's going on. Um, so it's about what was playing on the stereo and what I was drinking and what had just happened, which was signing up for the rewards program at this coffee shop. And then uh, as I was sitting there enjoying the coffee and doing the writing, I was also ripping up the little, uh, what is that, that little sleeve that goes on the coffee cup because it had these wonderful oak leaves and some of the things about the cafe and incorporating that into the journal. So this is really one of those pages where the writing is about a moment in time and the imagery helps to capture some other ephemera from that moment in time. And I have another writing thing that I wanted to show you. So with this one, I did a lot of the preparation of the page before doing any writing. So it has the vintage advertisement here. It has some magazine collage. It has a, some writing from something that somebody said. And then I had drawn these lines with yellow crayon and then I just left the page for a long time. I went back in and did this writing. So kind of making spaces for yourself to do writing. And uh, if, you're, if you're kind of in a space where you wanna work on your journal, but you're not sure what you wanna do yet, just going in and saying, I'm gonna make a place where I might write. The acrylic paint pens are great for this because they'll kind of contain your writing in different ways. So just something as simple as that can help to tell you, my words go here. <laughs> my words go here. They can be contained. I don't have to write a lot to fill that space, but it's, it's kind of dignifying your words making a container for them, making it not feel overwhelming, and also celebrating the things that you have to say. Because this is your journal, and uh, it's your space, and you get to make it whatever it wants to be. So we'll pause in a little bit here and, and do a little sharing, but I wanted to, since this is just calling out to me, just sitting on my, on my desk, um, I posted on Mix about getting these bags from the cafe. So it's that same oak leaf again, uh, love. But I asked them to double bag the cookies that I brought home for my family. Throwing brushes. Um, because I loved this side that had all the oak leaves, the little oak leaves. And then this part of the bag that has both have of the oak leaves. So ephemera tip, um, sometimes these bags that big kids are in, they're a little tricky to stick down. This is wax on this side. Glue stick will hold it, but it's just a kind of a thing to know you're gonna have to be a little more, a little more generous with your glue stick as you're sticking this on. Okay, so I, I kind of go back and forth between these two things. You'll have to let me know which, which one appeals more to you. Do you put the glue onto the page or do you put the glue onto the thing you're sticking? I guess sometimes it depends on the thing that you're sticking, right? But if I'm trying to fill up the whole page, generally I put the glue onto the page and then add more from there. But that helps me get a lot of glue on there so I can really make sure this sticks down. 
And then I've got these oak leaf pieces. I think I said this last time, but I really should take a overhead picture of after these two <laughs> live streams together because I've made a complete chaotic disaster around me right now. My art nest. Okay. So we've got this oak leaf set. Maybe I'll do one coming in this way. And again, I can go over top of where with my little writing spot because it's a coat paint marker and I can just layer it on again, right? All the fun journal layers. Okay. There's that half of the oak leaf. And sometimes when I'm cutting, I'm thinking about all right, I'm, I'm working on cutting this out. Where is it going to go? Right, you can kind of think about strategy while you're getting things ready. So if I put it here, I have this nice balance from top to bottom of the page. Or I could put it over here and kind of have this darker side and then the writing and then maybe I can add some dark over here. I like the way it looks on that side so that's where I'm going to put it. And because I'm, I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of lots of straight lines in my journal, like the more organic shapes, so I'm going to offset this a little bit, create more of those little baby oak leaves peeking through. And one last little thing I'm going to do on this page is go back in with my acrylic paint pen and put my writing spot back in. There it is. Okay, so some layering, spot for writing. And it's ready to go when I'm when I'm ready to write something about it and have something to say. All right. So we'll let that one be. And I would love to hear from you and see some of what you all have been working on. Okay, adjust more of these things. Can also a great time to ask any questions that you might have, ideas about materials, anything that comes to you. Yeah, so let's open it up here. Uh, you can either digitally raise your hand if uh, you want to share, or you can actually raise your hands <laughs> in the camera. Uh, I'll be scanning all the participants here. Oh, let's see here. We have Jill. Let's say hi to Jill. Got it on. Um. So a while back before we were doing this writing exercise, I wanted to make a page full of plaid. Mm. And so I did it, but then it, it kind of got messy and then I got really angry about something. And so I wrote about it and like pen over it. Oh, so great. Yeah. Wow. That, that was fun. A, yeah, that really helped me get that, that emotion out <laughs> about it. And then one other thing I did with writing was the dictionary page. Let's see. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote every single word that was the dictionary and I just chose different colors and different writing and that was kind of fun too. Cool. Yeah, great idea. Great idea. Those are both so, so fabulous and they're kind of two different ways of doing the writing in the journal, right? Like writing, doing something and then writing because I have a thing that I need to express. Yeah. And then writing in a way that's more about text as texture or text that's like design and creative. And they're very um, two different reasons that you might use writing in a journal. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Was there anything in the dictionary page that was like, ooh, that word? I really like that one. You know, it started with, let me see, where is it? it so I got the A's and it started with Alhambresque. Alhambresque? <laughs> I don't know. And then it ended up with Allah, which I thought was very, 
very interesting. Um, I would say Allah, that one really like, I was like, oh, wow, that's a word. But the mm -hmm. Alhambra was like just such this flourishing word. <laughs> I um, yeah, I was gonna try to collect ephemera that started with A's and then I just didn't really get to that. So I thought, well, I'm gonna fill it with my own <laughs> words. <laughs> yeah, so. But this is what I did for that other writing. The academic writing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And I, I actually wanted to keep going. I just like to, I just love to scribble. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure what to do with that page yet, but I'll figure out something. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for letting me share. Can I, can I ask one more thing about the flat? Did you do mm -hmm. both layers of that at the same time, meaning like, the lines going one way and then right into the lines going the other way? Or um, I just did the plaid and then um, it was there for a while. And then mm -hmm. I just kept passing by and I'm like, I didn't really like the way the plaid turned out because it bled a lot, but that's, you know, that's just the way it is. Yep. And then I just thought, I need to write on that. <laughs> so this is kind of what happened. Yep. Great, thank you. Well, I encourage people to try that out. Make yourself a plaid page and then See what you might see what you might add to it. Thank you, Jill. Yeah, thanks. Great. So we have Gina. So let me bring her up here. Gina, you're you're live. Hi, everybody. Um, that was great. Thanks for sharing um, those different techniques. I wanted to share um, a page that I did while I was on vacation. Um, and it was from like that first thing that we got together where you said you take some of your tea and you like use it as part of the design. So I did that. Um, and then we had done an, an I am prompt. And so I actually did this on Valentine's Day. Um, and I used like the packaging from the chocolates that my wife gave me and part of like the card. Um, and then I also really liked, um, similar to the last person that shared, um, that thing that we just did with the marking mm -hmm. with the different, and then I started, you had gone to, you had gone on to another thing, but I just started kind of like doodling in some of the open spots. And I really like that. I feel like I'm going to do that again with other, uh, water-based brush color, mm -hmm. uh, things. It's really cool. So thank you. Oh, wonderful. Um, so did you use a brush marker for that or did you use a watercolor? A, it's a water, yeah, yeah, water brush marker. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Great. Let's go to Sherry. If you want to turn on your video, feel free and I will, uh, let's see here, replace the spotlight. There you go. Welcome. Okay. So I'll show the acemic writing. I didn't believe that I could do it. Thank you for the tips. <laughs> and I actually loved it so much. I know I'll do this a lot. It was so much fun. But I do have a question. Um, and I'll show you an example of a page that I've been working on. So my question is, I don't usually have too much trouble getting that first, maybe second layer down. Uh, but that final layer, the mark making layer at the end, um, the lost and found edges, like I love the idea of lost and found edges, that's helped me a lot. But there's times when I can find the lost edges, but I don't know how to show that with marks mm. in a way that I do. Sometimes I'll do a lot of scribbling, but I think, and that's fine, but I think sometimes I'd like to branch out from that. So this is my example of where I'm stuck on this one. I have mm. this little part of a card from our wedding and then the polka dot fabric that we got in our yeah. ephemera pack and so there's this edge and this edge and mm -hmm. I, I brought it all the way out to the edge of the paper I don't I can't figure out a way to find that in mark making so um uh, so one of the things that can help is um acrylic just like blobs of acrylic can do okay. that where you're kind of taking so like the the either the flesh tone on the little cherub or the okay. shadow that's down below the dark area kind of having a little bit of that almost like smeared and you wouldn't okay. even have to use a brush necessarily but even like think about using your finger and just kind of smearing a little paint on there um okay. i really like uh tempera paint sticks for doing things like that as well 
the nice thing about um, a paint stick or um, I didn't, I got them out today, but didn't use them, but the, like the gelatos. All right. They'll go into that, that edge a little bit. So they kind of, it's almost like putting grout in between some tiles. And so you can think about your materials in that way too, that you're almost like grouting the tiles between these two pieces of paper where they're coming together, both structurally as well as visually. Okay. So that's helpful. Thank yeah. you. Good. Oh, um, uh, clear tape is another way um, okay. that then you can kind of, because clear tape will make a resist, right. not necessarily 100%. Um, archival depending on the tape you're using but um then you can kind of smear some again some water-based me media back against that and it'll it'll make that spot where you're just like what's going on here there's lots of layers and it's simple okay. that's a good idea i like that idea thank you great let's go to uh Lisa. let me spotlight you and then go ahead and unmute yourself Hi, so um, I thought I'd share where we did the rushed writing. So I kind of covered it up and then drew, I use the word time a lot, so. Hmm. And then um, I'm not finished with this page, but. Does that say hot dog? I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's actually um, when you order, from St. Louis Art Supply. Sometimes they um, give you like uh, the little a hot dog like container. Um, and so sometimes they also give you one that has like a pickle, <laughs> a pickle thing. So I thought it was fun and ephemera. We got an ephemera pretty going on here. Yeah, and it's actually a pocket, but I haven't written anything on it. Oh, cool, great idea. So. It is a great idea. Um, so you can like hide stuff in there if you want. I didn't do so well in the uh, ischemic writing. <laughs> Just kind of scribbled. <laughs> so. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. And the pocket idea is a great idea with that. Instead of ripping that envelope open, I have my other one of these bags. Maybe I'll do something like that where I leave it as a bag so something could go into the journal. Yeah, I also like to glue the flap down so it like folds out um, mm -hmm. and then you don't lose whatever's inside. But I didn't do that for this one because it was too long. It wouldn't fit in the journal. I don't have an example in this one, but. Cool, thanks for sharing. Is there anyone else that wants to uh, share something? Ask a question. Ask a question, thoughts, feelings. If not, we still have a little bit more time. Okay. I'm gonna get back into it. Other people are probably still working or kind of in that mood. Um, but if anyone else has any other questions or anything they wanna share between now and uh, the next 10 minutes, feel free to raise your hand or put it in the chat and we'll, we'll bring you up and you can uh, converse with everybody. I can share a couple more examples in uh, of kind of some of what we've done on some different pages. Yeah, go for it. So here is doing that kind of fast writing with the water-based media and then going back over top. Really simple, really quick. This was um, responding to something in a training that I was in, doing the writing, blurring it with water-based media. This is a tissue paper with music notes on it. And then I went back over the top with more of the watercolor pencil. And then this has um, a very, very matte, matte media over the top of it. And a little bit of that pencil kind of scribbling and obscuring the writing. So this was one of those pages where the writing was about responding to something in the moment, keeping working with the page as I'm kind of working through what's going on and then um, sealing it all together. This page has kind of a um, rushed in the moment uh, feeling to it and kind of a quietness to it and it's just going to stay how it is. Now this is an example of doing what I was talking about where your words are really about labeling what the page is about. So have an image here of 
is a bridge. This was from um, a furniture ad, but the color was just exactly right with this. And then I wrote the description, a bridge of compassion between self and other, which is relevant to a training that I was in at the time. And then I went back in just in a few areas with the white brush pen that we got in the first box and accentuated the, the middles, not of all the writing, just some of it to kind of, again, this is a lost and found edge spot where I could have just kept that as, as it is, but doing this, doing just this very simple thing helps to deepen the texture on this page. And then a little bit down here in the bottom, and then a little bit going up the edge here. And then I added a tiny bit, just very simple. You can see it smeared a little bit, but a tiny bit of black across um, where this furniture piece butts up against the sky, uh, again, to kind of squeeze and find the edge of this piece of collage. So two different examples of, of doing that kind of writing. I see another hand up. Yes, let's go. There you are. Feel free to unmute yourself. Hi. Uh, first, my apologies. I was really late because I don't understand time zones. Um, so I missed everything. But I've been doing a lot of writing in my journal. So I thought maybe somebody will like them, get some inspiration. Um, I was cutting out some letters. Um, this is actually a magic spell from an Anglo Saxon ring. So there you go. So I put. So there's some cutout letters. Um, I did have been doing writing that looks like what you've been doing. Mm -hmm. And putting some nice verbs on there and um, writing other things with weird tools mm -hmm. as opposed to paint brushes mm -hmm. and kind of some graffiti looking stuff. And oh, and writing the same word over and over and over again in different um analog is my word of the year so mm -hmm. there you go so i have been doing some some writing and enjoying the posts on mix Marianne, oh, thank you. and paint outs oh. so where you paint a background and a paint black or looking but the letters thank you so much for sharing those marion because you shared like in such a brief period of time such a diversity of letter forms these are so great and um, so when you're thinking about incorporating writing into your journal, there's kind of the, here's my handwriting, like my regular handwriting, this is how I write. There's my formal writing, meaning like I'm writing a list, I'm writing maybe um, a note I'm putting on my door, I'm writing something where I'm focusing a little more on the text being clear. Then there's the kind of calligraphic, beautiful art making writing, a little bit more of your body gets into that kind of writing. Um, and then there's all the stylized writing that we can do, whether that's copying a different font, right? Like kind of trying to write in a very beautiful serifed font with the little tails on all the letters or um, writing in a graffiti style or writing, looking, sometimes I'll even pull up a font on my computer and write, type out what I want to write and then I'll write it with my own hand. Um, when I was in grad or undergrad school in graphic design, we had to write Cabernet Sauvignon over and over and over, lettering it out, like and getting it perfect. And if we didn't get every letter exactly perfect and the kerning between the letters, we got graded down. So I have a little bit of um, lettering trauma from that, <laughs> but it is a, it's a great way to kind of say, I want a certain style. Let me pull it up on my computer and then I'm gonna actually do it with art materials. Okay, then you have um, found letters, right? So you can kind of go um, ransom note style and write things that way. Think about not just a word, but like writing a whole paragraph that way can be really fun. Lots of ways to incorporate words into your into your journal. Okay, okay so the question, uh, Marion, I wonder if you would answer what you did to leave the letters behind when you painted the background out. Hi, I um I wrote an answer. What I did is I painted a colorful kind of 
get your feels out expressive background. And then I um, painted everything except the letters black. Mm -hmm. um, so I just left the letters I there. Your yeah. Yeah. I was looking for that page again. There's so many in here. This is a big book anymore. Um, it's around here someplace. Let's see if we can find it again. Here he is. Yeah. So I had like a multiple colors and scribbles and stuff in the background. And then I just got a black paintbrush out and painted everything except the letters black. Great. And did you, so for people that want to do something like this, you yeah. could trust yourself and go with a, like a, a brush and just your paint and just do that. Or yeah. if you're feeling nervous about it and you had something that you wanted to make sure that you had enough room to say, you could make the letters and yeah, then you could mark the letters. Yeah, and fill in the space. Yeah. I happily don't care. I just stop where I run out of page and run things off the edge. So, <laughs> so yeah. that's great. And that's, you know, it's another thing to think about too is that if you're making an art piece with words on it, Right, you got to be a little bit more careful. Make sure you haven't run out of room. You don't go up the turn the corner, like my niece said, and make your let your words go up the corner. Um, but in your art journal, there are no rules. Right, you can keep writing and run out of room and add more paper on or turn the page. Even imagine that your writing can go from one page to the next and keep working. So again, you've heard me say this before: there are no rules. This is your space. It's your journal. You can show pages to people or there might be pages that are just for you. And with your writing, especially if you're kind of doing that in the moment writing, some of that stuff might be very tender. And um, if you're working in shared space or you're flipping through your journal and there's a page that's kind of a little more tender, one of the things you can do and all you need is a paper clip is just paper clip those pages together. So that if you're in a rush and you're wanting to show people your journal, you don't accidentally show something that maybe you didn't mean to, right? Someone asked last time how I kind of distinguish between the content that's more personal and the content that I share. And I said that I'm kind of an open book, but there may be some pages that I don't choose to share on Mix with you all online. So I would just put a little paper clip there and that one's just for me. This writing is for me, or this imagery is for me, and I don't need to share it because it's a journal. Great. Is there any anyone else that wants to share, comment, uh, have any questions before we uh, let everyone go here? I thought this was an excellent, uh, productive uh, live stream session, um, and you guys have been fantastic uh the community on arts next mix uh arts our journal snacks group has been fantastic um and uh yeah now's the time we're very excited the next box is shipping uh first week of april i know there was a comment earlier in the chat about that um so we're very excited about that um and thank you to those that uh filled out the art journal snacks um uh questionnaire is that is that a good way to say it yeah um a survey excuse me there it is boom saturday people survey um <laughs> i need another cup of coffee that's what that means um uh if you haven't yet dig in your email uh there should be a, a survey link uh we do uh read all the responses uh for not only this but any survey that we send out whether it's art snacks or watercolor snacks or art journal snacks. So uh, we want to make our surface better. And uh, we've already talked about, based on some of the feedback, um, some improvements that we can make in future boxes. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, and if no one else has any other questions, comments, suggestions, donations, no, I'm joking. <laughs> um, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your um of your weekend and i'll give the final uh final say to Aaron. go for it yeah i, I just want to say i see Anne marie's hand so i just want to oh sure. wonderful yeah this is what we want this is why we're here okay so let me spotlight you go for it hi everyone 
This is so cool to me. Sorry to be like the last minute girl, but it took me a while to get this to a place where I wanted to show you. So I only worked on the first thing today. Here it is. And my tissue paper and my fabric is gonna go on. But um, I, I just, I've been like calligraphy doodling forever, but I don't, I'm just to the place now where I say I'm an artist and like drawing and stuff is hard, but I wrote about our puppy. We are, um, my partner and I are raising a guide dog for guide dogs for the blind and today is his birthday. So he's one year old. That's what I wrote about. And I, I actually drew a dog and I had so much fun with so many products that we've gotten my I joined because my partner gave me art snacks plus last fall and then when I got on I saw this journal thing then I joined for that so I used like this gold ink and like a gazillion of the products that we've got that I've received over the last few months so it's a blast thank you Wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you raised your hand and um, are closing us out with a happy birthday message to your dog. That's <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing and welcome to calling yourself an artist. That is a great thing. Um, and I'm so glad you're able to com combine some of those materials together to, to create that beautiful page. So my closing thought that I want to make to all of you um, is remember I am strong, right? The I am, not I feel, but I am strong. And I really look forward to seeing some of those pages on Mix. I would love to see all the different ways that this group is strong because um, I've seen a lot of that already in the things that you've been sharing. Um, and our community is so strong, as Lee said. So thank you so much. This was so much fun to be with you all today. And I will also share the images that I started today, I'll I'll share those on mix as well. So so fun. Glad to see you all. Happy Saturday. Yeah, great. Thank you everybody for joining. Um if you missed a part or came late, no worries. Within the next day or two, I'll get this up as a playback over on uh the mix group. And until then, have a great rest of your day. Bye. <laughs>